Hi, it's Susan Newman, AKA Susie Brantastic, and we're here at the Mod Cup Warehouse in Jersey City with Gary Vandermeer and Malcolm Marsden from the sensational Country Blues Wonders. So my first question to you guys is if you could describe your style of music to our listeners. Oh, we play country music, guitar based country music, rockabilly, rock and roll, gospel, blues. It's, um, sounds like a lot of different genres, but we work in a period where you really couldn't tell the difference between all of those. Um, very little, I don't think there's anything that we do that's older, that's, that's newer than 1955. So we're, uh, we're a roots uh, organization. <laughs> mm. And we, we, uh, we play uh, some uh, very uh, traditional uh, but lively electric guitar music. Mm. And, and we were influenced by a lot of artists from the 20s and the 30s. And back in that era, you had the blues musicians playing with the country musicians, the black musicians playing with the white musicians. So if you listen to that music, the country music of that era sounds very bluesy and the blues music has a country feel to it. Mm. So we're basically carrying on that tradition of, of mixing all these great musics because they're, they're all of a piece. Mm. And so how did the two of you get together and how did you know it was going to be a, you know, a really good fit? Well, I, I met Malcolm at an open mic here in Jersey City at Dorian's, uh, run by a group called Play Musician, and we didn't know it was going to be great. <laughs> We, uh, we just started talking to each other and we found we had a lot in common musically and uh, we gave it a shot. We started playing at some open mics in, in Jersey City and it really jailed from there. Mm, fantastic. So um, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the places where you play and you know, in, in, and I know that you play around the New York and the New Jersey area. And so do you select different types of music depending on where you're going to be playing and why? No. We are, we are what we are. <laughs> we play what we play and, uh, you know. And like we play chips. for whoever will have us. Um, <laughs> That's right. We, we played traditional venues, bars, cafes. Uh, we've also played uh, chili cook-offs, uh, motorcycle and auto shows. Um, lumber yards. Lumber yards. Uh, cemeteries. Yes. <laughs> wow. Even, even people's backyards. So um, maybe you could give listeners a little taste of, you know, the types of music that you would play and, um, you know, like you were talking a little bit about the influences of people that you've listened to in the past. So um, could you describe it a little more, you know, in full? Well, we, we've been influenced by a lot of the old blues and country and, and gospel acts. I, I can name people, uh, Gene Vincent, Chuck Berry, uh, Brother Joe May, Sister Rosetta Tharp. Um, brother Claude Ely. Brother, uh, Reverend Claude Ely? Yeah. Or Brother, brother Claude Ely. Yeah, his brother. Um, plus, the, there are a lot of influences that you may not hear in the music, like, you know, Malcolm and I grew up in the 50s and 60s. Uh, the Beatles, the Stones, the Kinks, uh, there's also the, the punk thing, so the New York Dolls, Iggy and the Stooges, uh, the Ramones, the Sex Pistols, the Clash, you may not necessarily hear that in the music, but it's definitely there, it's a driving force, and uh, it's part of the mm. energy of what we do, too. And so, uh, you know, would you, would you say that, um, you know, different crowds react to the music differently? Um, I. I think we sometimes in younger crowds they're a little puzzled because they haven't heard that kind of music. Mm -hmm. And even in older crowds are, are not used to hearing um, a music that is that sounds old-fashioned on the one hand, but it's also really visceral on the other hand. Mm -hmm. um, it, we get reactions from people. We get very positive reactions. People feel things that they don't usually feel from uh, music, particularly a duo. Uh, we make a lot of noise, <laughs> the two guys, and uh, we um, uh, there's there's 
Uh, we've got loud and louder, I believe, are our two modes. And mm -hmm. we've got people <laughs> moving. So uh, it's, um, uh, and the whole gospel angle uh, introduces a, um, an enthusiasm mm -hmm. that uh, you don't really hear. There's a spiritual element to the music, even whether or not you share the, the uh, sentiment in the lyrics, mm -hmm. there's a spiritual element to the right. sound of the music that gets people's, that lifts people's spirits. And we've been told that specifically by people who just are pretty amazed by it. Yeah, you know, most of the time when I've heard you guys, it's, it's been in almost exclusively, I think, outdoor venues. So I wonder if you could just describe the difference as, as we're talking about the way people react to it. Um, the difference between those outdoor venues and when you guys play a club, because it must be very different. Yeah, I don't know. I, th I think that it's a very primal music and it kind of hits people in the gut. And whether they're indoors or outdoors, I, th I think they react to it. So I, I don't know if the venue really matters. We hmm. played for um, uh, church crowds. And uh, just this past weekend, we played a biker's convention. And uh, everybody seems to have the same reaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, how often do you start uh, l looking or do you look for new music? And how do you know if it's going to work out with um, the way you play? Or do you customize it so that it be, will be right for your group? Um, you know, I, I think sometimes I'll just hear something and I know it's something that we should be doing. That just happened recently. I, I stumbled upon a, a song by a guy named Brother Claude Eli called Ain't No Grave Gonna Hold My Body Down. And mm -hmm. the minute I heard it, I said, this is a, a, a sensational country blues one, this song. Mm -hmm. And I worked it out in a couple of days and uh, I got together with Malcolm and uh, he dug it and, you know, we rehearsed it a couple of times and we're playing it now. There was also a situation where we were invited by a, uh, a club in Brooklyn, the Way Station. They were, um, they invited us to participate in a salute to Sweetheart of the Rodeo by the Birds, mm. uh, which was a groundbreaking album uh, where they also went back to roots music uh, and they did country and, and gospel and uh, some R&B related stuff mm -hmm. that they turned into country. Uh, we were given three songs we really didn't have a choice, did we? Mm -hmm. uh, but we, but they were the right three songs, and we learned them, and they're part of our repertoire now. And wow, we're cool! Things out. So uh, you know, uh, sometimes these things happen by accident. You know? Yeah, fantastic. Happy accidents. Yeah. All right. So uh, when are the next gigs coming up? Okay. Uh, um, I got my list here. One tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. I'm sorry. No. Thursday. We're at the way station. Thursday, September 25th, mm -hmm. at 9 p.m. Uh, this weekend, we're at the Hamilton Park Barbecue Festival on Saturday, September 27th at 2.30 p.m. Sunday, uh, September 28th, we're at the We the People Constitution Day celebration. Right. That's here in Jersey City. Right. Westmas Cemetery. Right. And uh, Sunday night, we're at the Sidewalk Cafe in, in Manhattan, uh, September 28th, 9 p.m. Station uh, on Thursday, October 16th at 9 p.m. Uh, Mojo Lounge in Jersey City, Friday, October 24th. And uh, we have a new venue, the Terra Hill Irish Tavern in Manhattan, Tuesday, October 28th at 9 p.m. And so where can uh, listeners find you online? Okay, we have a Facebook page. We have many videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And they just search the sensational country, country blues, blues wonders, wonders, and they'll find you on Facebook. And, and we just yeah. opened a, a Twitter account as well. Awesome. So. All right. Thanks. Cause if you let them ride, they want to try and drive, don't let them ride.